Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 27th edition of the Coffee Microcaps Morning Meeting. My name is Mark Tobin. I'm the founder of Coffee Microcaps for anybody who's joining us for the first time and for all our regular attendees, welcome back to this morning's event. Uh, for anybody joining us for the first time, uh, just a quick bit of housekeeping. So we have two companies presenting uh, roughly every fortnight over an hour. Uh, each company is, gets a 30 minute slot, which we roughly break down into a 20 minute presentation and a 10 minute Q&A session at the end. If you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box rather than the chat function just makes it far more easier to moderate the questions at the end. Uh, please note that the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, so if a particular presenter skips over a slide a little bit too quickly, you can go back and watch it tomorrow. And indeed, you can watch any of our previous events. And where to follow Coffee Microcaps, you can get us on Twitter, as I said, YouTube for this recording and the, all previous recordings of our webinar events, uh, LinkedIn, where I do some additional long form content. I also write a weekly paid uh, microcap newsletter, which you can find at coffeemicrocaps.substack.com. Uh, our first presenter is actually a returning presenter. I'm delighted to have uh, Mr. Sal Lukatsky come and give us an update. Uh, on Spirit Technology Solutions, ST1. A lot has happened since I saw the last joined us. So I'm looking forward to hearing the update. And then after Sol, we're going to have Mr. Robert Edgley, the MD of Self Wealth, as our second presenter. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sol. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And Sol, if you want to start sharing yours. Oh, man. I, yeah, if you just go to, yeah, I can see it now, Sal, you're ready to go. Thanks, Mark, and uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to uh, about Spirit Technology Solutions. As Mark mentioned, uh, we're back a second time. Um, we're far larger, and um, I think we're a small cap now rather than just a micro cap in terms of what we do. Uh, the agenda for today uh, is firstly to introduce Spirit Technology Solutions. Um, and go through the operating model, which has expanded uh, materially over the last six months. But then to just provide a rundown of our H1 results. Obviously, we're, uh, we've just completed our Q3, so I can't enter those because they're not on market yet. Um, and then uh, last week, um, we made our largest acquisition to date, which doubled our SMB customer base. So I'll talk to that. Um, and that was a, a successful capital raising with all major institutions uh, that are on the register participating as well as an increase in our CBA loan facility. So they're the three key items that I'll, I'll touch on today. Firstly, um, about Spirit, um, and really this is our strategy and operating model on one slide. So hopefully this makes it clear. In terms of, um, before I go into that, um, just in terms of our size, we're a market cap of uh, circa 240 mil. I think yesterday we closed at about 244 mil at a 37 and a half cent share price. Our revenue run rate uh, per annum is 140 mil. So you'll obviously see a, um, a difference between the H1 number and where we are today on a run rate basis. And we are profitable. So we were profitable for the first um, half of the period. Um, and we continue to be a profitable organisation and I'll talk to the EBITDA numbers as well. But more importantly, what do we do? Um, what we've been able to achieve over the last 12 months is put the company in particular growth segments within IT and telco services, predominantly in the business market. So we started live providing high-speed internet uh, and then we quickly realised that the network that we own uh, and the service that we've got uh, were a perfect on-ramp for us to provide a range of other IT services. Um, and the last 12 months, uh, we've done two things. We've acquired those capabilities. We've begun integrating them and having enormous success and in catered through an integration. And obviously last week, we added 100 new salespeople uh, to our um, distribution channels to allow us to sell more product. So what do we do? We walk into a business, we can provide them with high-speed internet links. 
Um, we can provide them with a cyber security offering. So our cyber security offering is about a $30 million business these days. And we provide, provide cloud, uh, private or public. Why is that important? Uh, because workforces and uh, different types of organisations now want to have remote workers required cloud operations. We always have a mobile product, so we're a Telstra um, a wholesale partner. Importantly, on voice, we uh, we sell a variety of third-party products, but we also have our own voice platform. Why is that important? Well, we typically um, can generate 70 to 80% gross margins around voice. Managed services. So once we've delivered those sophisticated products, um, we can wrap those into a service level agreement, which drives our recurring revenue business that I'll talk to uh, in the next few minutes as well. Markets that we play, um, we play in the SMB market. We've got approximately 10 and a half thousand customers um, in the SMB market. So we're now at scale as opposed to where we were say one to two years ago. We do a lot in the middle market, which we refer to as essential services. And that's schools, hospital, aged care. So we do a lot of the private schools through Melbourne, uh, Sydney, in Queensland. Uh, we do large hospital groups such as Ramsey Health and Peninsula Health. And in our corporate government business, um, we've got a, a, a cyber security practice that generates, look, it's, it's doing around the 30, 30 mil run rate mark these days as well. So what you've got is diversification of product, you've got diversification of geography, and you're playing in three key markets, SMBs, essential services, um, and corporate and government around a product range, which is modern, and that's why we refer to ourselves as a, a modern telco. The market that we've um, identified is what we call the techo market. And that is the telco and technology market merging into one. And I think Mark would have heard me say this before, you know, 12, 18 months ago, and I said that telco and IT are merging. Well, if you don't believe telco and IT are merging, you're currently not on the same Zoom call that I am. And that's, what, that's where we play. In terms of how we sell, as I said, we've got a direct sales force of about 140. Uh, we also have a wholesale channel with about 350 partners and resellers, and we white label our services. Uh, additionally, we're the largest digital aggregator of high-speed internet products through our SpiritX platform, which is available on spirit.com.au. So that's Spirit. In terms of our um, financial summary, as I said, these are the H1 results. And clearly, they've materially moved uh, with the recent acquisition and organic growth, but it gives you, a, I guess, a, a, a quick understanding of the scale of the business um, only. Uh, moving from H120 to 12.5 mil in revenue with a 44 mil number. Um, also, our EBITDA uh, for the first half was um, 4.4 mil underlying, and we were profitable. Uh, obviously, the, the balance sheet has changed, but at the time we had $23.3 million of cash um, and debt. Our balance sheet still remains healthy. Last week, we raised um, $23.3 million from institutional investors. Uh, I mean, I won't go through the institutions on the register. Uh, but you would know them all very, very well. Um, and they include high net worth families, family offices, and the largest institutional investors across the country who invest in small cap stocks as well. Additionally, um, what I'm really proud of, if you're looking for a high growth company, but you're also very uh, focused on annuity revenue stream, um, you know, our, our, our recurring um, revenue um, is, is roughly 62% um, um, of our uh, total revenue. So we use the project revenue to come in and deliver the services, um, but we have a huge level of recurring revenue, which should give you comfort that through particular shocks or particular changes, uh, we've got an enormous amount of contracted revenue. And I'll touch upon our recent acquisition, which contracted revenue makes up approximately 80% of their recurring monthly invoicing. Underlying EBIT uh, continues to grow. We went from 1.6 to point. 4.4, um, and I'm also proud to show you uh, an impact positive result, um, which for high growth stocks, I think is important. Maybe I'm a bit old fashioned, but I like revenue growth combined with EBITDA and then profitability. And we continue to be profitable through the quarter as well, which we're pretty proud uh, to, uh, to show in terms of the economics flowing through the business. So you've got a business growing at revenue, uh, growing at the EBITDA line, uh, showing great annuity revenue streams through contacted. It's put itself in growth markets and it's now showing that the economics can flow down all the way to the impact line. And that hasn't been easy because of the um, fixed wireless network, we still do carry, um, and you can see it through there, some level of um, an annual depreciation. Probably the most um, material event that we've had um, 
in the last um, three months. Um, we obviously acquired a significant cyber business in December, um, but last week we announced the successful acquisition of the Next Gen Group um, and around the um, business telecom. So two brands. Uh, what does the deal mean for us? Well, we moved to, a, uh, they're about a 36 mil revenue business um, and pushing out 7.2 to 7.6 in EBITDA. We paid a multiple of 6.5. Um, we believe that that's a, a very, very good deal. And we, and we were, um, I guess, rewarded with a capital raising that was materially oversubscribed in support of that acquisition. Additionally, um, uh, CBA also increased our, our debt facility from $15 million to $25 million, certainly not fully drawn down. Um, but what, what that gives you is, it shows you the support that we have from Australia's largest bank on debt and they were across the entire acquisition and that acquisition took six months. So really proud of that achievement. What does it mean for us? Well, we double our customer base. Um, instantly, we get 100 extra sales team members to sell our product. Um, not just the products that they sell continuously, it's a good business, but what it does also is provide our, um, 100 new sales team members to sell our internet product, our own voice product, our own cloud product. So there is a cross sell opportunity, but more importantly, we now use their methodology and sales methodology across new business and their entire life cycle. And we did acquire them and I'll be honest, in terms of the customer life cycle, next gen is far superior in terms of the intellectual property um, in terms of sales. In terms of what the, the two together look like, and I've touched on this, um, we are a material player. We're 140 million uh, revenue per annum business. We've got 10 and a half thousand um, B2B, SMB clients, uh, and that doesn't take into account our essential services business and our cyber business. 140 people strong in terms of selling product. You, know, you can have all the capability in the world, but you need to sell it. And our reseller network grows to 350 as well. Uh, um, you may have seen some of our advertising. So we're now advertising on a national basis. Uh, we are advertising on Sky News. We've got billboards all through Melbourne and Sydney, particularly around the airport precinct. Um, and most importantly, we've We've put the business in a space where there's demand. Um, we're having very strong demand coming through our sales line. Uh, and recently we won um, a number of corporate accounts um, in health, in education, and a large mining client as well. And recurring revenue. Um, uh, if you've got recurring revenues, you can plan, um, you can invest. And we've got those at 65 to 70 mil within that 140 mil run rate. The next gen group, um, and, and this is why we're eager to do this deal. Um, they bought five and a half thousand customers um, with close to 80% of those customers contracted. That means even not that we would do this, but even if you just shut down the sales, you've got years and years of EBITDA flowing through the business. Uh, and their average contract length is you know, 2.5 to three years. So really sticky customers, uh, small businesses that continue just to tick over month on month. In terms of growth opportunities with the two businesses coming together, um, the Spirit portfolio historically was predominantly in the, in the small business segment, a very Melbourne centric. So Spirit yeah, began life in Melbourne. Then naturally there was a flow of customers into uh, the Melbourne geography. NextGen was born in, in Sydney, um, about five years apart from where uh, uh, Spirit was born. So therefore you now have a strong SMB network um, of customers and resellers in Melbourne, and then is beautifully complemented with the customer base in Sydney. So geographic spread uh, and salespeople on a national basis. Uh, we still have a huge opportunity for a partner and reseller distribution network in the next gen business. And also the cross sales. We've identified a number of products that the sales teams in next gen can actually deploy. And they use a telemarketing model and an outbound model. So the difference there is Spirit is particular, has been mostly inbound with using search engine optimization, Google advertising, while NextGen um, is a very professional outbound telemarketing and sales business. Extract synergies, um, certainly, you know, in the last, even just in the last few days, um, we found 400,000 in potential synergies just on the billing systems alone, once we've gone in there and compared costs. So although I don't think there's synergies there, in the millions. Um, and I think that the major opportunity is cross-sell growth. Uh, there will be natural synergies, particularly in IT licensing, back office integration, and the finance functions being collapsed in, in, into themselves with NextGen as well. 
terms of what's coming uh, in growth in H2, we certainly don't sit on our hands in spirit if you followed us and, and have a look at the activity that we've generated. Um, we don't just provide a strategy, we're executing. Um, we have enormous demand in our cyber security business and that's where our advertising is placed around Sydney and Melbourne currently. Um, we've um, uh, launched, and that this, this slide is a bit historical, but we, we now have the mobiles product in market and generating very good deals around that. Um, we're also generating, um, and this is where next gen will be important, we're beginning to sell more of our own um, voice product. And that comes with not 20, 30% gross margins of a third party product, but 75% gross margins, because on that product, it's effectively a fixed cost. Uh, we only pay for the data um, and the carriage. We, we're bullish on um, some of the end of year financial um, incentives that the government have put forward for small business as well in terms of write-offs. We've got a really good order book. Um, uh, the last two months have been really strong on sales. Um, we're very bullish on the new NBN enterprise ethernet products. So, I mean, it's the, some of the pricing on the NBN business products on the enterprise have halved. And that means that we can enter more organizations and take market share from the Telstra's and the offices, which is what we're doing. Our Spirit X platform continues to thrive. Um, and that's a platform that allows you to service qualify um, multiple providers um, in the um, high-speed internet game. And as always, we continue to be acquisitive. Our balance sheet is in very good shape. Obviously, we got the capital raising away materially over subscribed and CBA has supported us as well. So strong balance sheet, strong um, uh, demand for the product and then a good, an organisation in really, really good shape. So that's coming. So what you've got here is sales, EBITDA growing, um, good recurring revenue, an organisation that strategically put itself in a strong position where there is demand um, and the opportunity to execute. And it, we're delivering on what we said we do, which is what I'm most proud of. This is not, this is not just strategic, this is execution in the market as well. Mark, I've, I've, um, I've gone through that, but um, I'm, I'm happy to, to move to Q&A um, if that's appropriate as well. Um, thanks, Salia. I've got a few questions that have come in ahead of time. I'll kick off with those while we're waiting maybe for one or two to come in from the audience. Uh, just sure. on that last slide on the, on the acquisition opportunities, one of the questions ahead of time was, uh, how should we think about acquisitions going forward? You know, are they going to be on the next gen scale or is it looking at little bolt-ons that give you complementary geographic areas or complementary, you know, little products and services. What's your thinking now, given, you know, as you say, the business is now a significant scale and a, and a proper national yeah. pair. Yeah, good question. I think, um, I think you never say never. I think it would be unlikely that we will do smaller deals going forward. Um, we, we have significant opportunity to scale the business on much larger deals, um, both um, public company deals, um, and private company deals. So I would say, you know, if a really good small deal came along at a really good price, we would look at it. But I would say the probability is probably low because last year we built all the capability that we needed. So typically we, 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 we tried to do those smaller deals because we needed a particular product or a particular, or wanted to enter a particular geography. So my answer is it's unlikely we would do smaller deals going forward, but not impossible, but highly unlikely. Okay. And then uh, another one, I don't know if this is completely relevant or not, but do you measure the average number of, of products that, you know, customers are taking up? So, you know, somebody, they're taking cloud voice and um, cyber, but, you know, they mightn't have gone to the full end of the spectrum and doing managed, uh, full managed service packages. Uh, do you have a sense of where that number is or, or is that something you're trying to, I guess, optimise now on the cross-sell with, with the next-gen guys? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, the, the, what we've actually done is move to, we've migrated the whole um, customer base, obviously apart from next-gen that was only completed last week, although they are in the same to Microsoft Dynamics. So that's exactly what we're doing. Um, we're, we're working down typically from our top 100 customers and what we've done is segmented who doesn't have particular products. And then our sales team do exactly that. They're uh, calling decision makers and having discussions around gaps that we can potentially fill for them. And that's existing customers. On new customers, and I noticed the Q&A, our competitive advantage is exactly that. We can come in 
So we won two large corporate deals on a voice product, our network and a Microsoft product. Our competitive advantage is that we can provide all those products in a bundle um, at a good price. We can deploy those products together as well in a project for new customers, save that customer money and, uh, and then account manage them and have accountability in terms of the service. There's, there's no IT and telco businesses that can come to a deal with their own network, uh, a cyber offering, um, and then also manage service. They just don't exist in the marketplaces right now. That's great, Jay. Tackled that one that, that came in uh, uh, live. And then another one from uh, our person who couldn't join us, who was going to listen to these back on the on the YouTube channel. Um, what's the, the main uh, product offering that's getting you in the door right now? Uh, I think they're asking, you know, is the real demand coming for cyber solutions from people that get you in the door? Or is it people looking for cloud due to kind of COVID, you know, which one of those, I guess, product lines is the one that's really driving the initial conversations? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can answer it um, uh, collectively because all the markets are a bit different. Um, probably in this SMB market, um, first of all, I'd say there's, we've got enormous demand for all the products. So, you know, we, we, we certainly do not have an issue with demand. Um, in the SMB market, I'd say it's internet and voice and IT services. Um, for schools, it's definitely cloud and security. Uh, and the reason schools and hospitals cloud and security because they need um, the students and the teachers to have a mix of remote working. Um, and in enterprise, it's definitely cyber. So the risk, the risk issues in cyber um, literally um, have snowballed materially. And there's a great onus on boards in enterprise uh, to manage their cyber. So my answer is in the three markets that we're in, it's a bit different for each one. Um, SMB, definitely voice and data and IT services. Uh, schools, cloud and cyber and enterprise, um, particularly cyber. Uh, but they, clearly all of those open opportunity to have conversation across all of them. Um, but that's, that's probably a structural change. We're also winning business of the majors, the Telstra's and the Optus's. Okay, great. That was my three I had ahead of time. Uh, I'll just, if we have any more questions from the audience, I'll take them now. Okay, it doesn't look like we do. So let's uh, leave it there. I know we're finishing a, a, a little bit ahead of schedule, but um, I have our next presenter lined up, so we might as well uh, get going. Thank you very much for coming back in and giving giving us a, an update. And do you have a, an idea of when your 4C is going to be coming out? Mark, we don't do 4Cs. We don't, oh, sorry. can't require. Yeah, so we're, we, uh, we're past that. Um, we probably will do a market update in early May. Um, okay. So um, because we've acquired the next gen business, um, the business is so fundamentally changed. Um, what we'll do is, do an open investor update in early May. So that, that'll be invitations that'll be on the ASX in the next couple of weeks. So, but expect it early May. Okay, early May, so people should keep an eye out for, for that. Yeah, and that'll be a four month update, including the next gen business and the strategy going forward. So it'll be a, a trading update. Okay, great. So uh, early May, keep an eye out for that. Okay, thanks so much, Sol. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all. And we have uh, Rob, our next presenter. I'm just going to get uh, Rob's presentation uh, here shortly. Uh, Okay, Rob, I've got your presentation up here, ready to go when you are. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, you hear me loud and clear? Uh, yeah, your audio is perfect. Okay. Um, morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I've got, looks like I've got an extra five minutes. Um, 
that uh, we should be able to cram a, a whole lot into that extra five minutes. So uh, I'll get Mark to flick through these slides on my prompt. So we'll move on past the disclaimer to the, the first uh, slide, the who we are slide. A really quick um, history of self-wealth um, since its founding in 2012 up, up to today. Uh, the company was originally founded by Andrew Ward and it, it, be, it began its life as a peer-to-peer a -peer investment community, a subscription model. And that uh, really was uh, also backed by uh, its fintech da data mining base. And by that, I mean, when Andrew founded the company, uh, he uh, did a long-term deal with uh, a gentleman by the name of Ron Lesh, who owns a company called BGL. BGL is Australia's uh, largest provider of compliance software for uh, the accounting fraternity, which services the SMSF uh, portfolios. So uh, what that meant was that um, at that time, you know, over 100,000 portfolios uh, were, the data was shared with Self Wealth and continues to be shared with Self Wealth today and that's now um, in excess of uh, 200,000 portfolios. That data uh, comes into Self Wealth. It's all anonymous, but we're able to mine that data. We're able to work out which portfolios over time have been performing better, who are the better traders, what's in their portfolio now. And that, in, that, that uh, information was shared with the peer-to-peer uh, -peer investment community. After four years of doing that, although it, grow in num it grew in numbers, um, uh, it was evident that um, it wasn't going to make a lot of money. Uh, and therefore, Andrew decided to launch Australia's first flat fee online broker. Um, now, that, the, 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 the reasoning behind that was if you knew what you needed to buy, you knew the stocks that you wanted to buy, you then had to go out and buy it. And, and Andrew came from a wealth management background, which uh, he was quite embarrassed about the, the levels of fees uh, that were being charged. He was well ahead of his time before Royal Commissions and, uh, and, and the, the demise of, of commissions. Uh, he launched his flatline uh, broker, flat fee online broker, uh, and uh, charged a flat fee $9.50, no, no commissions and no bank fees, all of the bank fees absorbed by Self Wealth. Uh, that got some traction and he was able to list on the stock exchange in 2017, raised about seven and a half million dollars and went about uh, developing his brand uh, with uh, some fairly significant above the line marketing. That uh, has now transpired into a company that uh, has now passed $5 billion of funds under administration. That's, that means uh, hin based stock on our platform is over 5 billion. And uh, with our recent quarterly just announced a few days ago, we're up to now 86,000 active traders. So the products are the, the Australian retail platform charging its $9.50 flat fee. Uh, we launched US trading December last year. Uh, we have $9.50 US, US dollars fee, brokerage fee there. Uh, and we have um, uh, earn a foreign exchange fee on uh, the trading. We, we give everyone a US dollar account uh, a US dollar wallet that they can transfer their cash uh, into before putting that money to work in the US in the US market. Uh, also, we have a self wealth advisor platform which gives the advisors access to that flat fee brokerage, and and it's particularly um, liked by advisors who are uh, very much uh, want their clients to have their own individual HIN as opposed to the the, the big platforms who offer custodial solutions. Uh, Self Wealth also launched in, 19, in 2019 uh, its first ETF, which is um, uh, m trying to monetize that IP that I was explaining before. And uh, we launched uh, with a $100 million seeding and we earn a management fees on, on that ETF. I'll go to the next slide. Matt. Yep, there we go. Um, go really quick through this one. I've mentioned, um, I've mentioned the, the flat fee uh, the ASX trading, I've mentioned the US stock trading, uh, very competitive foreign exchange fees uh, at, the, at the pointy end of the market. And, and uh, we also uh, allow people to, we only take our fees on uh, when they transfer their, their Australian dollars into US dollars. Unlike um, some of the uh, 
uh, competitors out there who are bringing, if you're trading between from one US stock to another stock, sometimes you actually get brought back into Australian dollars and have to cross the FX spreads a number of times before you end up uh, with uh, your final result. So we are rated very highly. We're, we're the highest rated on all the review sites. Um, and I mentioned this, that the advisor platform before. So let's get into the numbers on the next slide. Um, the, today really should be all about our growth, our growth over the last 12 months. Our self wealth was already growing before COVID. Uh, it was growing at, at very, very healthy levels, but that growth has been absolutely turbocharged um, over the last 12 months for, for a variety of reasons. The, the, uh, with our quarterly revenues that we released on uh, Monday of this week, the quarterly operating revenue uh, jumped to 5.78 million for the quarter, uh, and that was up from 4.4 million in the previous December quarter and 178% up on, the, on uh, a year ago. Uh, we also had um, the best ever, a new record. Uh, we broke through the 500,000 trades in a quarter barrier. Uh, and that was up significantly from uh, around the 380,000 trades in the previous quarter and 220% from where we were 12 months ago. I mentioned we've broken through 5.15 billion in HIN. Um, that's, uh, that's a great uh, measure. We don't earn money on, the, on the, the volume of funds under administration, but obviously our clients, the more stock they have on our platform, the more stock they're able to trade with and, and an, an increase in HIN generally mirrors an increase in our revenues. Uh, we have um, the, the key driver of all of our revenues is the amount of active traders we have on the platform. Uh, at the end of March quarter, we were at 85,944. We added 18,500 in the last quarter only, which was the largest increase that we've seen in any quarter, um, even dwarfing the, the March and, and June quarters last year, which were heavily impacted by COVID. Uh, we also earn a net interest margin on the cash held on our system. We earn uh, from the ANZ uh, a margin of 80 basis points above the RBA cash rate. So at present, we're earning 0.9% on that 452 million. It's roughly about 12% of our, 12, 13% of our, um, of our total revenues. Uh, I would point out that um, that has continued to grow last quarter, despite another 85 million on top of that, that has been transferred into clients' US dollar wallets and has been put to work in the US market where we've, we've not only earned a foreign exchange fee for those transfers, but we've earned some very good money on, uh, on the US brokerage side. Um, we have been positive cash flow three of the last four quarters. Uh, this quarter in particular, we were uh, 558,000. So you, that's on a cash basis. So it's pretty safe to deduct that we will um, end, the, end, the quarter, end the financial year with a positive EBITDA. Um, I'd be disappointed if we didn't get to that. I'll move on um, to, the next, uh, to the next slide. Um, okay, um, active traders, um, I mentioned the numbers in, in the previous slide. Here's a representation of the growth. We, were, we, we did have a, uh, a number of client acquisition events in the last quarter, which helped us enormously to post that record 18 and a half thousand new active traders. Just for people who don't know, I always talk in active traders. Active traders are not registrations on the website. If I wanna talk about registrations on our website, we're well over 200,000 since inception. But when you're talking about active traders, you're talking about people who have um, cash in their they've gone through the whole onboarding process. They've absolutely been approved, have had an ANZ account opened um, and they're ready to go. But even at that point, um, they're not defined as an, as an active trader. They must have cash um, moved onto their ANZ bank account or have transferred stock from another, another online broker or another um, uh, full service broker. Uh, you either have stock to sell or cash to buy securities. Then you're an active trader. Um, I don't expect um, that, you know, we had a we had two major events in, in the March quarter. We had the um, opening of our US business, which caused a flood of um, applications um, to join Self Wealth. And we also had the GameStop event, which uh, where many of our competitors were uh, experiencing outages on their system. Uh, on their platforms, they were, they were restricting traders about which stocks they couldn't, could and couldn't uh, buy. 
and therefore we had a, um, a, a another surge of um, of traders wanting to join Selfwell. So I'd expect our growth to go back to the the previous sort of three quarters average, um, which has been in that roughly sort of around the three to four thousand active traders a month. So ten to twelve thousand. Uh, 10 to 12,000 a quarter. And whilst we're doing that, whilst we're doing that sort of growth, uh, we will see trades increase and trades are increasing um, significantly over the last three months. You can see there we've breached the 500 mark. I'll just, I'll just pause there and, and just answer some, a, um, a question that's probably gonna pop up. You know, why is this growth happening? And I'll just go through the structural changes which have, have really um, turbocharged this growth. Um, in, our, in Australia, our, um, our rationale for investing um, is, being, is changing all the time. And what we've seen is a, a, a massive uh, surge in the addressable market for online brokers. Um, many, many more people want an online broking account. Why do they want to do that? It's because the nature invest of investment, investing has changed. And for millennials in particular, it's changed significantly. My generation, we finish school, we used interest rate saving products, term deposits. We were paid five, 10, some years even 15% on those term deposits. We got our deposit ready for a house, an asset. We bought the house. We spent the next 10 years uh, trying to get our mortgage under control. And we, if we were lucky in our mid thirties, we came to a point where we had a little bit of extra income. What are we gonna do with that? Well, let's look at investing that money. You started to think, about investing your money, excess money in income at that point of your life. That is completely different to what's happening in this day and age. You have the millennials who finish their, their education uh, and they need to invest first, not last. They can't get that, to, they can't use interest rate saving products. They need to have a, a view on the investment markets before they can, so that they can continue to grow their wealth over time to get that deposit for a house or buy an asset. So the investing comes first rather than last. And that's why once they make that decision, I need an online broking account, they then um, uh, have another quality which we didn't have in my generation. Millennials were born digital. So they've, they, they have everything at their fingertips. They have access to all the research they need, um, whether it's social media influenced, financial influence, podcasts, um, days like today, they can listen in to what I'm saying and look at our company and evaluate that. So, and they are, they're a generation that likes to make their own decisions. So the self-directed investor, um, the whole theme, it's not going away. Anyone who thinks it's going away um, has been wrong for the last eight, six, well, 12, six to 12 months, definitely. And I, I believe it's going to be um, a clear thematic for the future that gains strength. And that's why self wealth's in a very good position. So I'll go on to the next slide. Um, more, more active traders, more trades, uh, all leads to uh, more cash coming onto our platform. And you can see the big jump up in, um, uh, in March uh, of last year as COVID hit in and people started to want to open online accounts more and deposit their funds uh, on that account. Uh, we've, um, we've seen that growth uh, continue. Uh, and as I mentioned, we get paid a net interest margin on that. Uh, we, uh, there has been some talk around all the platforms, ANZ cutting net interest margins. We have a contract with ANZ, they must give us 12 months notice. They have not given us notice uh, at this point of time. Um, we also have a relationship with ANZ where um, I believe we will uh, negotiate new agreements in the coming year, whereby we see some cost reductions uh, come into effect as well. Um, whether that's in, in a trade-off for some of the income or not, we'll see how that, that pans out over the next, um, the next couple of quarters. Um, the HIN there is over 5 billion, as we've mentioned, uh, and we can move on to the next slide. Okay, just for those who, um, you know, we always, uh, I always face this conundrum um, in, in meetings with um, uh, investors. Uh, we have investors who want extremely high growth and don't really care about EBITDA at this point of our um, evolution at Self Wealth. And we have investors who are very focused on EBITDA. 
Well, I think this this chart shows you that we're doing both. We're we're delivering uh, incredible growth in our revenues. Uh, the full year, based on the on the, uh, the the three four C's that have already in the market, it's pretty easy to deduct that we're going to have revenues close to the twenty million mark um, at at the end of this financial year. Uh, and also with three positive cash flow quarters out of the last four, um, uh, two out of the last three of this financial year positive, um, it's it's quite uh, likely that we'll see the EBITDA go above above that line. Um, we are definitely investing. Um, we're investing in our IT and we're investing in our marketing and we, we see a, a, an incredibly low cost of acquisition. So you will see our marketing budget continue to increase while we can achieve that, that low cost of acquisition. Um, to give you an idea, uh, we spent $400,000 on marketing in the last quarter and we got nearly 18 and a half thousand clients. So it's, it's roughly, it's for the last six months or so, it's been around that uh, $20 a client with about a two month payback, which is absolutely extraordinary. Um, I don't think that will last forever. It, it's because of the, the huge influx of people looking for online accounts. Once they, um, we are highly targeted digital marketers. So once people decide that they're going, they need a, an online trading account, especially young people, and they go to the comparison websites, they go to the digital channels to do their research, they're going to come up against self wealth time and time again. Once they, once they've made their mind up, and they then go and look for a uh, look for a, an online broker to join. Um, they're almost coming to self wealth um, uh, from that point because we have huge recommend referrals. We have huge. Uh, we're highly rated. Um, we remember for the last three years we've been the until last year we're the only people with a flat fee where that we've built trust in our brand because we're looking after people, helping them grow their wealth in a responsible manner over time. Um, I'll move on to the next chart. So uh, 12 months ago, um, I was told that um, COVID was a, um, you know, a two or three months sugar hit to the online broking industry. So we're now more than 12 months uh, past that. And I'll just draw your attention to these stats on this page, which are stats for the the first quarter. They were probably actually, we released this in the middle of February. So it was sort of the figures over December, January, February. Uh, our, all of our um, social media and our website traffic, all of these figures have increased um, dramatically in that period and actually much more than what we saw in this, the, the key peak COVID periods of March and June quarters last year. So it, it sort of debunks the, the theory that um, uh, you're going to get a, a sugar hit for three months and you're not going to be sustainable. We will have ebbs and flows. The market's not going to be going up all the time. There will be, uh, there will be times when the market goes down, when people lose money. Um, Self-wealth is trying, you know, our goal in life at the moment is to get our product um, our breadth of products uh, and with many new products, which mean new revenue streams for us, get them launched over the next uh, six to 12 months. Add, our, add functionality on our platform because we're at the point now where we're absolutely um, fit and able and ready to take on the banks. Um, the banks have 70, the bank backed broking online broking platforms have 70% market share still. They have legacy systems, 20 to 30 years old, um, that cannot compete with, with, with cloud-based systems. They're not as agile. It takes a lot of investment to do anything on those systems. The user experience at Self Wealth is much better. Um, the price is, is enormously better. And we've seen, in all these years, we've seen the banks do nothing in, in regard to changing their prices. So I, I would argue um, that uh, whereas, their clients have been coming to self wealth over the last three years. They've been coming uh, for the reasons of user experience and price. Um, what we need to, to do over the next six and 12 months, and what we're going to be able to do with the investment and the, the positive cash flow we're generating, is invest into, the, uh, into our platform to make sure that we have the same sort of functionality. Remember, they've had 30 years to get that functionality in place. 
um, and they've had 30 years to get the product breadth in place. So you will see in the future options come onto Self Wealth. You will have access to IPOs uh, and capital raisings. We will have a segregation of our clients between general investors and sophisticated investors. The sophisticated investors will be able to participate in capital raisings. Um, uh, many other products will branch out further into verticals where you, you may well be able to buy fixed income products or uh, um, buy managed funds. All of these things are on the table and they're all um, doable in a, in a, in a, on a platform that is has very scalable technology um, and is dedicated to its innovative, um, continuing the innovation um, that it's had for the since its inception in, in 2012 by, with Andrew Ward. Um, so I'll move on to the next slide. Um, I was talking about we're targeting the bank's market share. Well, in many ways, we're already there. We're not, we're no longer, you know, the, the investment lent, investment trends online broking survey, which is the, the holy grail in the on, online broking world. Um, they coined, uh, 12 months ago, they coined us um, one of the, the challenger brands. And in fact, we were the largest of the challenger brands. Um, I'm going to, uh, my thesis at the moment is that we're no longer just a challenger brand. Our, our uh, if you look at the, um, website rankings and the, the traffic on websites, we're starting to actually generate more traffic uh, than some of the bank platforms already. Um, so that will lead to more customers and that will lead to more, uh, to more revenue and more market share. And we are very excited about um, the next 12 months when we, we reach a level of functionality and a level of product diversification that we can actually um, take on the banks uh, for the first time head on on it on on a completely uh, a complete 100% basis not just uh, relying on the price differential move on to the next page which uh, will be the last one and uh, we can then talk a bit have a few questions um, the US trading uh, launch of US trading has been sensational for self wealth we we did time it very well um, you, there's an element of luck in that. Um, however, we did make decisions last year that we would we would stop um, development of, of all other functionality and get this done. And that proved to be a very good decision. Uh, it's uh, the US and the differences between the US market and the Australian market. The ASX charges obviously a um, percentage fee. All the costs in the US are fixed costs. It's a much more competitive environment amongst the exchanges. The barriers to entry into that business were very low. Um, we went into a, profit, a net profitable um, situation in, in February, one month after starting um, our US trading business, uh, whereas in the Australian business, it took us seven years to, to generate a profit. So uh, it gives you an idea of, um, obviously, we, we, we opened that business with already at the time 60, 65,000 active traders. Uh, so uh, we've now converted 25% of those active traders, which now stand at 86,000, 25% of those have now added US trading functionality to their Australian portfolio. So what by that, I mean, this is why people are attracted to self wealth. You now, within, within the one portfolio, you set up your Australian dollar account, you, you set up your ANZ bank account, you invest, you can invest in Australia. You then just tick the box to add US functionality. You go through a bit more paperwork and uh, most of it is digital. Uh, and then you're ready to go in the US and you see all of those different stocks all in your one portfolio. It, you don't get taken to another, another part of the platform um, or you don't, um, uh, you're not limited by some platforms where they can only trade in the US. So this has certainly spurred our success over the last quarter and we're only at the start. 7% um, of our trades in the third quarter were US, uh, US trades. Um, we're very confident we're gonna get that to 10 and 15% in the near term. Uh, also, um, the technical issue um, is, uh, is very key. People do not want to have times where they can't trade. They do not want to be dependent on uh, their supplier to tell them what they can and can't trade. Um, whether it's domestic or US, um, we've had a, um, a very, very good track record. Um, if, if we have a, an issue that might come through from a third party, we get on top of it in 10, 15, 20 minutes. 
Um, we don't shut the platform for half a day or a day or two days in some cases. So that is the sort of uh, client experience that's leading again to the success of self wealth. Okay, I'm going to open it up for questions there. Um, and uh, we've got another, we've got 10 minutes. So I'm happy to, um, if Mark will uh, uh, help us uh, with some of those questions and I'll, we'll, go, we'll go for it. Okay, great, Rob. Um, yeah, we've had a few come in ahead of time and a few live. Uh, I'll just tackle one of the live ones first uh, while I get the, the other ones up. Um, I think one of them you've tackled uh, on the the net interest margin. Um, uh, the question was, is the interest income sustainable given ANZ's recent move to end a similar agreement with net wealth? Um, are there other alternatives? Maybe just give your yes, thoughts on um, that. Look, it's, it's worth, it's worth um, highlighting that again. Um, we we want diversified income streams, and we did. We've added US dollar brokerage. We've added uh, uh, FX revenue. We've added e ETF management fees. We want many more revenue streams. That's where the successful platforms. That's how they how they go about their work. Um, so I that four hundred and fifty million dollars sitting there. I want that net income margin to decrease in some respects because I want that money spent on other products on the platform. So if we didn't, if we had um, not, if we didn't have the US platform, we would have much more than 450 million on there. But the 86 million we transferred, we made a good FX margin on that, a very competitive margin, but still good money. Um, and we we also saw that then put into into that money put into action in the U.S. market where where we're earning higher gross profit margins than our domestic business. So what's going to happen with ANZ is um, we're a little bit different to the the net wealths of the world and the hub 24s. Um, they have a custodial model with one bank account. We have 150,000 bank accounts with ANZ. We're the largest their largest client, and and. Uh, what I can say, um, and there's still a bit of negotiation to be done, is that um, we're paying, we're absorbing bank fees on those 150,000 accounts. Now, the whole structure of ANZ's uh, offering is going to change, and we'll be doing, um, putting together a new deal, and those bank fees will uh, will disappear, and we'll move to a different pricing model. And that means that, um, uh, yes, there may be a trade-off. Um, in any case, it's, it's not going to be a short-term hit because we have a 12-month um, uh, clause in our contract that they must give us 12 months notice. And also, don't forget, um, our margin was a lot, at the moment, we're earning 0.9 and we're not paying our clients anything. Go back two or three years, we were earning um, 3% and we were paying our clients 1%, one percent, one and a half percent of that interest. So our, our, our margin there was, was 100, 150, 200 basis points. Eventually when uh, interest rate yield curve normalizes, and I don't believe it's gonna normalize, this is a win-win situation for self wealth. If it doesn't normalize, it means you've got more and more people looking for online broking accounts because you, you don't wanna put your money in the bank. Um, if it does normalize, we go back to the point where we, we can expand our margin, keeping it competitive and making sure that we're treating our customers fairly, which is, it's, it's in our DNA. So that will always happen. Uh, but our margin will then increase again, uh, our net interest margin. So um, I'm attacking it from many angles. I want, I want more products for that money to be put to work to earn more than that 0.9% annually that I'm earning now. Um, and I want to ensure that we have a, a long-term relationship with ANZ that um, re reflects uh, uh, some very significant cost savings in our new agreement. That's different to net wealth. They got a cut in income and they're not gonna get any cost savings around the bank accounts because they have one account. Um, I'm, I've got a significant chance of getting a very big cost saving having 150,000 accounts. Uh, Next question. Yeah. Uh, we've actually answered a, one of the other questions got ahead of time, but we've got kind of two questions that are kind of essentially maybe just give you a broad thoughts on them uh, rather than me asking them both. It's all around the, you know, cryptocurrencies and Coinbase going live yesterday. You know, what self-wealth 
plans, if any, on you know whether providing in it an exchange or, or or capitalizing on the millennials and the, and I guess the the demographic makeup of your customers for you know their propensity sure. and their and their demand for crypto assets or non fungible tokens, whatever it might be. Okay, really good question and one that we're focusing on right at the moment. Um, we, uh, we have a major project going on internally, um, which is a customer research project. It's, it's a 12 week bit of work that we're having done by an external party. You uh, delving, doing a deep dive into our customer base, into all of those millennials, finding out what is our cust unique customer value proposition? What do they want to see on our platform? And by the, by the middle of this year, we'll be able, we'll be releasing to the market our product roadmap for the next 12, 18 months. And at that time, it's, it, we'll, we'll look at um, what everybody really wants. And if, 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 if most of our clients wanted cryptocurrencies, then, then we would be facilitating that. We'll see what is driving people at the moment. There's, there's a number of um, very key functionalities and products around direct equities that and remember, people have joined our platform for access to direct equities. There's, there, as I, I previously mentioned, we want to be able to, to compete with the banks. We want to take that seven, some of that 70% market share. Uh, so there is a, a commitment to adding to the direct equity products and functionality, but it doesn't preclude us from definitely going into those other areas should our client base want it. So. Um, we've got some short-term roadmaps, which we outlined in our 4C. We've got um, uh, minor accounts, the ability to open accounts for your children um, starting in about six weeks. We've got where we're putting um, ESG research onto the platform shortly as well, um, where we've got a beta test underway for live pricing. We have live pricing when, on our stock page. When you, uh, when you look at a stock or when you place an order, you, it's live and you see all the depth, all of that but we don't have live pricing going through all of your portfolios on a, a live basis. It's all 20 minutes delayed. So we're doing the, it's the costs of that are pretty significant from the ASX. So we're doing a beta test. So those, those are the things that are on the short-term roadmap. And we ticked off last quarter, we ticked off ASX announcements live across the platform. Um, uh, we, we, we launched our stock reports, 10 to 12 page research reports on every US stock, every Australian stock. All that stuff's already been ticked off. There's more to be ticked off this quarter. Um, and then by the end of this quarter, we come June, July, you'll see our full product roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months. Okay, great. Rob, questions are kind of coming in ticking fast. If we run over by five minutes, is that okay? We'll just try and get Absolutely. through it. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much. Um, another one, um, I guess maybe if we just go back to... Um, Security, you know, a lot of the reason, you know, people go with the large institutions, you know, the bank aligned ones, you know, it's kind of the comfort of, you know, having that large institution and the maybe cyber security. Uh, can you just maybe give an, uh, an outline of what you guys are doing in terms of cyber security and infrastructure, you know, that kind of, you know, gives people yes. that security um, and that, you know, the, it's not a, it's not a differentiator between you and, you know, um, CBA and, and, and their main offering. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, we have uh, um, had a very good track record in this area. Um, however, as people know, it doesn't matter how big you are, um, there's all, you're always open to the possibility of this. Um, we, we do spend a lot of time internally talking about it and the board approved uh, an, an incremental um, per annum increase in our IT spend of $3 million in January um, to put in place a number of things. Um, there's more developers and, and, and we'll be running multiple development teams so that we can bring those products we were talking about before to market at a faster rate. Um, but also the, um, within that additional spend is um, an increase of spend uh, on, on the cybersecurity um, front. Um, uh, chief security officers, um, Self Wealth um, is a small company, and we do, um, to a certain extent, rely significantly on our suppliers, people like Open Markets for our settlement execution and clearing, ANZ for our bank accounts, um, and uh, 
uh, Lab Group for our onboarding, Philip Capital for our access to the US market. So we have got suppliers. We choose big suppliers and very innovative suppliers. Um, the big suppliers on the your cash is each each of the cash accounts that that self wealth clients have um, is eligible for the, the the government guarantee of up to two hundred fifty thousand under that scheme that the government has. It's an ANZ account. It's they they are the beneficiary of that account. They're not their money's not pooled with other with other people's money. Um, on the uh, uh, obviously on the settlement execution, we have a good partner in open markets. Very very good technically. Um, people thinking thinks the same way as we do about the future, um, and we work we work very well with them. Uh, so uh, security, yes, we're adding more money. We'll do everything we can, uh, and we are plugged into people who think likewise and who spend a lot of money on their security as well. Okay, great. And then uh, I guess probably it'll maybe come in the the product roadmap you've alluded to earlier, but. Um, going into other markets, you know, having a, a, a UK wallet that gives you access to the, the FTSE and the AIM or a Euro yep. denominated wallet that opens up, you know, the DAX in Germany or, yes. or any one of the kind of European exchanges. Um, yes. Is that something we should be thinking about? Yes. When, when we set up our US trading uh, offering and, and all the suppliers, Philip Capital, Refinitiv, who give us our, the, we access data for all of those, for those US exchanges. We've, we've set it up with the ability to add additional markets in some cases at no extra cost and certainly at no extra cost to our clients. So um, we, we have absolute capacity over the next um, I don't know. We I haven't put a. We've got so much work still to do on the US to to get the the percentage of trades from seven percent up to fifteen percent. But uh, but I, I would when we're talking about that product roadmap, there's definitely going to be discussion around adding. So far, from what I see amongst our clients and from what I see amongst trends in global equities, um, I would say that um, we would definitely need access to one Asian exchange. Um, but maybe that's Hong Kong, and and then definitely uh, uh, access to a to a European or UK exchange as well. So that's my thinking at the moment. But our, our clients will tell us which what they want, and we'll be will be guided by them. And then another question, just on uh, systems as well, Rob. I mean, the huge uptake um, that seems to be continuing um, in terms of onboarding and managing that volume of onboarding. Um, has that required a step change in um, people, resources uh, on the onboarding side? And yep. you know, yep. I, yep. are you kind of comfortable you can you can manage these high level growth numbers yes. uh, going forward? Really, really good question. Um, and 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 client service and client experience is so key to our success, and that's why we have it. We have grown so much and and outgrown. You know outgrown everyone else we've in the, in this absolutely exploding market and addressable market increasing we've gone from two percent of the online broking market share to seven six seven percent so so where, where our growth is is exceeding everyone else's and the reason for that is the customer experience now we um, i'm not going to um i'm not going to uh say that we're perfect um we had an, an extraordinary rush of clients um looking for um, self-wealth accounts to trade in the US in the first quarter. And that caught us a little bit unaware. The GameStop phenomenon caught us a little bit unaware. Um, we've had, we, there was a backlog in, in getting those accounts open and it caused some angst around our client service. Uh, and we're, we're absolutely aware of that. Um, we have uh, employed many more people in the client services area in the last three months. We've automated our system even further. Um, so that it takes away some of those bottlenecks and we've got back on top of those. And the, for those self-wealth clients, they would have received regular up, uh, emails from me in the last quarter, firstly explaining why the, the situation was what it was 
and and then uh, what in, what we were doing about it. And then a, as recently as last week, another email explaining that for many of our client services, we're now right back to our normal service levels. There's some industry stuff around stock transfers that sometimes it's our fault, sometimes it's, it's another broker's fault, sometimes it's the client's fault for giving the wrong information. That can take two or three weeks to get your stock transferred. That's not a self well specific problem, it's more of an industry problem. Um, so let's talk, let's just make a differential between the onboarding process and the, uh, the, fun, the fundamental um, uh, ability for you to trade on the platform and outages, that sort of stuff. We've gone from um, 20,000 trades a month to 200,000 trades a month um, in about 15 months. And we haven't had any issues um, with people's ability to trade every day that the stock, even the ASX have had their day of outage. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been very, as I mentioned before, um, credit to our uh, IT team, credit to Andrew Ward for building a scalable and um, agile uh, um, and affordable uh, platform cloud-based, um, something that's going to stand us in good stead against our uh, major competitors for the next few years. Uh, this is going to be the, the last one, Rob, um, but I think, it's a, I think it's a good one. Um, I'm just going to squeeze it in. Uh, subscription revenue per active trader um, has increased substantially in the quarter. Could you elaborate more on the, part in, the importance of the subscription model? Really good question, um, and I'm so glad you uh, gave me that one because, um, to a certain extent, this is the um, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for self wealth um, and for our clients as well. Uh, we've done a pretty poor job um, of converting active traders into our subscription, into paying that extra twenty dollars a month. Um, we haven't done much work on our community data for three or four years. We haven't educated everyone um, properly on how to use it. We need to simplify it a little bit more. All of, all of that that I've just mentioned is going into our product roadmap and people will see um, the merit of that community data. Now, bear in mind, we're still getting the over 200,000 portfolio SMS portfolio data coming in to mine and, and put that the, the results of all of that on our platform. But we've now got 86,000 of our own, our own portfolios that's also in the mix there. So that community data is very, very important. It will remain important and it will get a higher profile amongst our subscription model. But we're not just going, in the, in the past, that's all you got for your, your $20 a month. Um, that's not the case now. Uh, in a, and, and we have seen a, an uptick in subscriptions big, recently. We, we, we gave everyone a three month trial on, uh, on uh, the research stock reports, our research product. But we did say right at the beginning, after three months, this will be a premium feature. This will be a, um, uh, a subscription feature. So um, as of this week, um, if you want to continue downloading those stock reports, you get a pop-up screen that asks you to um, upgrade to, to our premium service for $20 a month. Um, when we get to June, when we do our annual promotion and most of our, probably 80 to 90% of our subscribers um, uh, take advantage of this promotion every year in June. In June, you're able to pay 12 months in advance, $240, uh, on your subscription and you receive 15 free trades and you receive a, a tax deductible receipt for $240. This is a very good deal that pretty much everyone sees and takes up. Now, when we offered this deal six, uh, 12 months ago, um, we had about 45, 46,000 active traders. Uh, by the time we get to June this year, we're gonna have 100,000 active traders rough, roughly. So there's going to be about 50,000 odd active traders who haven't even seen this deal before. So um, I'm going to be extremely interested as to, um, and I think that the historically, two and a half, three percent of those people have taken it up. I think the percentage will be will be much greater this year because um, we're having, we'll gradually have more and more uh, functionality um, in that subscription service 
uh, and people will want, they won't want to do without that. They want to pay that $20 a month to get access to that. So, so we're making that subscription model much more valuable to our clients. And, and we believe they will, they will um, pay their $20 a month or they will pay their $240 in advance uh, and, and take, take advantage of that opportunity. So I expect um, uh, also going forward in the next 12 months in FY22, as a new, a new active trader joins the system and joins the platform and they have their, their first three months um, free access to the premium um, uh, the products, when that, that three month uh, period finishes, I think we're gonna get a much higher level of people who say, I, I can't do without that. I want that, I'll pay the $20 a month. Whereas in the past, really 97.5% of those people have said, I don't need it. I don't, don't, I, I don't understand this community data. I'm not, I, I can't use it properly. So two pronged approach, um, fix the community data, make it more easy to use, educate people how to use it. Uh, and on top of that, um, you get the, uh, put the added functionality into that uh, and, and you'll see that, that people will be much more um, uh, inclined to take up that offering. I've just put um, the uh, shareholder contact details up, up here, um, Robin. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for, for giving us an extra few minutes there and, and tackling as many questions as you did. Um, we're going to leave it there as I, I'm conscious we're already over time. So thanks to Robin. Thanks to everyone for joining. And as I said, the recording of this will be up on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity to present. Cheers. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, everybody. Bye.